In this video, we're gonna be showing you how to align your own car using the techniques that we use here at Suspension Secrets using a string and line kit. We'll be showing you how to build the kit, how to calibrate the kit to the car, and then how to take the measurements and adjust, as well as covering some key geometry aspects along the way. The string and line kit is used for measuring tow on a vehicle. So before we get into building the kit, we'll just cover briefly what tow is and what tow in and tow out is and how we're gonna measure it with the kit as well. So we've drawn a really simple diagram here on the whiteboard. So here we've got a basic square resembling a car, and then you've got four wheels at each corner, front of the car here, rear of the car here. So if the front edge of the wheel is pointing inwards, that's known as toe in. And if the front edge of the wheel is pointing outwards, then that's toe out, represented here on the front and rear axles. So when we build our string and line kit, we're looking to make a perfect square grid around the car, meaning that these outside lines here will be exactly parallel with the center line of the chassis and the forward and rearward poles will be exactly perpendicular to the center line of the chassis. This means we've got a perfect grid around the square chassis of the car. Once calibrated, we'll then be taking measurements from the string to the front and the back of the rim, represented here by X and Y measurements. The difference in these two measurements when X is minus from Y gives us toe in or toe out. So for example, say we took our measurements here and we had 47 millimeters at the rear and 45 millimeters at the front, that would be two millimeters toe out because the equation would give us negative two, which is two millimeters toe out overall on that rim. We could then take our measurements to get our achieved toe setting and then we can move on to the next wheel. Don't worry too much if this isn't making sense right now. It'll make a lot more sense when we get the rig on the car and we're taking physical measurements and we can show you exactly how we're calculating this. So when we're aligning cars, we have them set on these four trays. So the, the benefit of this is it, we can make sure that the car is on an exactly flat patch. So we laser level these to make sure that each square under each tire is on an exact level with one another. So when you're aligning your car, you wanna get it as flat as physically possible. I know that's not always possible in some cases when you don't have kit. So you wanna to get to a, a patch of land maybe that is physically as flat as it can be or in a garage or something like that um, to make sure your readings are as accurate as possible. When we're aligning cars as well, we're looking at geometry and the order in which we're gonna align them. So the best route to align a car is to do caster, then camber, then tow. That's because each one has a big effect on the next one. So caster has a huge effect when being adjusted on camber and toe settings. Camber then has a big effect on toe settings. And then toe is the first thing you feel when you drive a car. So it's the last thing you adjust to make sure that it's driving perfectly. You might have to cycle that a few times. So if the car comes in and it's, it's just been freshly built with adjustable arms all over the place and it's really wonky, then you might have to cycle those three things a few times. So you do caster, camber, toe, you go back again to caster, camber, toe, and then sometimes you go a third time again to caster, camber, toe to make sure that each setting is exactly right because they will have knock-on effects if they're, if they're out by a long way. Today, we've got this E92 M3 track car in with us, four corner weight and alignment. So we're gonna be showing you how to do the camber and the toe on this car. The caster is adjustable on this car because it has the nitron coilovers fitted with an adjustable top mount. However, on most cars, caster is not adjustable. So we're just gonna be showing you the camber and toe today. We can do caster at a later point in a different video as it's a little bit more complex to adjust. So we're just gonna focus on the camber and the toe. For camber, it's important that you have the exact flat patch because if you don't, then the camber readings are gonna read off as the lay of the land is gonna come into the reading. If you can't get a flat patch, then a digital camber gauge is a really good bit of kit to use because it can be calibrated to the floor so you can, if you want a slight angle, you can lay a spirit level down, sit this on top, and you can zero the gauge to the angle of the ground so it's reduced from the settings, which is a really nice touch. So if you're on a slight incline, not to worry if you've got a, a camber gauge that's digital and can be calibrated. So we're gonna be using this BG Racing digital camber gauge today um, to take the measurements around the car, and we're gonna get the camber set all around the car before we build the string and line kit to do the toe. So when you're measuring the camber, you're looking to have the gauge set exactly at the top and the bottom of the rim, and you want the gauge to be as upright as physically possible. This gives you a nice, perfect camber reading that you're getting at the wheel, and you can then adjust the camber to get the number that you're looking for. So camber is adjustable on most cars as standard, especially at the rear, and on some cars as standard on the front. This car with the adjustable top mounts on the coilovers, we can adjust the camber up here, 
as it's a McPherson strut, we can give that camber using the top mount adjustment. On most cars at the rear, it's an eccentric washer, if no aftermarket arms have been fitted, so it is still adjustable with that cam washer on the rear. So this is the BG Racing string and line kit. This is what we use to set up all the cars that we set up here at Suspension Secrets. It's really accurate, loads of adjustment in the kit, so we can make it fit multiple different makes and models. And if you're setting your car up quite a lot, it's well worth the investment to get this kit to set your car up and, and make sure it's perfectly accurate. When we're mounting the kit to the car, we're looking for a nice sturdy position that's quite symmetrical to mount to the front of the car. So in most cases, the back edge of the front bumper or the back of the slam panel is a really nice place. On this car, we're gonna use the bumper because it's got a really nice carbon fiber air box in there. So we don't wanna get the rig anywhere near that. So we're just gonna hook onto the back edge of the bumper and we're gonna pull that in until it's about to make contact with the front bumper. And we're gonna slide up our foams just to rest on the bodywork there, pull it in and lock that off. So when we're doing this, we're looking to get it relatively symmetrical, but we're not looking to have it perfect because we're gonna make all our adjustments once the rig is hung on there. So that's the front hung on. The rear is exactly the same procedure. Often you lift the boot up and you do it inside the boot. And again, against the rear bumper, putting your foams in there to protect the paintwork. When that's mounted, we're looking to get the pole roughly level with the center line of the wheel by eye. Doing that by eye will just save you a bit of time when we come to taking the measurements. So looking at this, I know we need to come up a little, like quite a chunk there. So I'm just gonna slide that up. So we're roughly on the center line of the wheel with our main pole here. Another quick trick, I'm taking a look at our pole. It's got two joins here in the middle. I'm looking to get that relatively symmetrical with the car. Again, this is gonna save us some time when we come to setting the rig up a little bit later. Now the rig's all mounted to the car, front and rear. We're gonna put our strings on and we're gonna run our strings front to rear and we'll get them now. So the BG Racing String Line Kit comes with these string reels. So what we're looking to do is take the loop end, we're gonna slide that over the end of the pole and then we're gonna put it into one of these machined grooves. So on this car, we're gonna go for machine groove number three from the outboard. That means that on every corner of the car, we're gonna to have to use the same groove. This means that it's gonna be the same distance from the center line at each corner, which is really important when we come to take our measurements later. You then run that down the side of the car, all the way to the rear pole. And again, straight into machine groove three. So we know that we're gonna be as straight as possible when we take our measurements. That's been done on both sides. So the next step is to get a tape measure. We're gonna take some measurements and get this kit calibrated to the car. The first step of calibrating the kit is getting the string line in line with the center line of the wheel. So we're gonna take a measurement with a tape measure and we're gonna measure how high the center line of the wheel actually is. So you wanna get nice and level with the center and there it's saying roughly 31 centimeters. That's just a touch higher than center line, which is where you wanna be. You'd rather be a touch higher than a touch lower um, or bang on center line. So we're gonna go for 31 centimeters. So now that means we can take our measurements from the tray that the car sat on up to the string and we want that to be set to 31 centimeters at all four corners. So that's currently 29.5. So we're gonna set that round the car at each corner to 31 to have it exact. So to adjust the height on the string line kit, we're gonna use these two adjusters here that hold the upright bars in place. So we'll literally take the weight of the bar, undo the screw, and then we can move that up roughly a centimeter. And then we know we're gonna be nice and close to our 31 centimeter number that we're looking for. Do that on both sides, always make an even adjustment across the bar, and then take your measurement again. You might need to cycle this quite a few times, so you'll get closer and closer as you go. Also, as you lift one side up, it's gonna tip the other side down. So you wanna make sure that you're constantly checking left to right to make sure that the bar is exactly straight by the time you finish with exactly the same measurement left and right. So we're very close now. I've been doing small tweaks here and there, and I'm now happy with the height of our string on the front axle. So it's gonna be the same process at the rear, using that bar adjustment to get it exactly parallel and horizontal so that we can have a nice string line through the center line of the wheel.
So we've now got the height of our string set exactly to 31 centimeters from the floor all the way around the car. So we know that, that string is now running exactly through the center line of each wheel. The next step to calibrating the kit is to take a measurement to the rear edge of the rim to the bar so that we can get the swing of the bar correct. So we're looking to get that bar exactly perpendicular with the center line of the chassis. At the minute, the kit could be slightly twisted. So we want to make sure that those bars are not twisted at all. So we often start with the rear wheels because in most cases, it's not full of adjustable arms. So we can trust that the rear wheels are square with each other on the chassis. So we can take a measurement from the back edge of the rim to the center line of the pole. This is measuring at 82 centimeters. And then we can make sure that that measurement is the same across the rear. We adjust that on the kit by shimming the pole in the hook in the rear of the kit. So we can change the swing on that bar very slightly just so it measures perfectly. So we know we're perfectly straight on the car. Once the rear bar is set, it's often a two person job to achieve this, but you can basically measure from the rear pole all the way to the front pole to make sure again that the left to right measurements are exactly the same as each other. So we set the rear one square with the rear axle and then we set the front pole square with the rear wheels. We do this in most cases because if caster is adjustable on the car, that can affect where the wheel sits inside the wheel arch. So if it's not been set perfectly or if it's not adjustable and it is different, then we can't always trust that the front edge of the rim is in exactly the same place in the chassis to each other. So that could set the bar off. If your car has been measured and your caster is perfectly symmetrical, then you could do the same at the front where we're just measuring from the rim to the pole to get that square with the car. So now onto effectively the most important bit of the kit setup which is setting the poles left to right. So they're on a slider, so we can slide the pole further away from the wheel or closer towards. So what we're looking for when we do this is to get the tape measure. We're gonna look straight in to the center line of the wheel. Sometimes you're on the end of a drive shaft, other times you're inside the wheel bearing, other times you'll be on a wheel cap. But we wanna make sure we're on that nice and square in the center line. And then we're gonna take a measurement to the base of the string. What we're looking for is for this measurement to be exactly the same left to right by sliding the pole until that is achieved. The number front to rear might be different due to different track widths front to rear on cars, but we're looking for the front axle numbers to be exactly the same as each other. And then at the back, separately, we're looking for the rear numbers to be the same as each other left to right. When we've achieved that, it's always good to go around the car again because moving the front will move the rear and vice versa. So you'll move it in cycles that get smaller and smaller and smaller until we achieve those measurements front to rear. So that's what we're looking for. When we've got the same number left to right, that's the kit fully calibrated and square with the chassis. The way that we can move this number is by just grabbing the pole with one hand, holding the tape measure with another, and we're watching the string line directly in line with that tape measure, and we're just moving the pole until we hit the number that we're trying to achieve. So I'm looking for here to have 19.8 centimeters, and then I know that that is exactly even left to right because it's the same measurement on both sides on that front axle. So now that's the kit fully set. So when we're happy with our left to right measurements, we're gonna lock that pole off with this screw. That's just gonna pinch onto the pole and it's gonna prevent that slipping when we're moving the car around now or when we start working on the car to make the adjustments. So we're gonna take the measurements now from the kit. When taking measurements, it's often best to have the driver's mass in the car. Either put a person in the car and make sure the steering wheel is perfectly straight as well, or you can put a ballast in the seat, which is what we've done. We've put ballast into the seat to account for the driver's mass. So we can take adjustments knowing that the car is loaded exactly as it would be with a driver in it. When we're taking the measurements, we're getting a steel rule with really accurate half a mil to a quarter of a mil readings. We can then put that on the back edge of the rim and we're gonna slide that up until we're just below the string without making contact. We don't wanna to touch the string, we wanna get really close to it though, keeping the rule nice and flat so we can take our measurements. So there we're getting a measurement of 76. And then the front, we're getting a measurement of 80. So using our previous Diagram, we're gonna do X minus Y, which is 80 minus 76. So that's telling me that we have four millimeters of toe in at the moment before we take any adjustments. 
So we're gonna be adjusting that to get the setting we want to get on this car to get it working perfectly. When we talk about settings for cars and we talk about tow in and tow out, it does depend on chassis and platform, if the car's front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, four wheel drive, but also the use of the car is really important. So if it's a road car, you'll tend to tow in front and rear axles to keep the car nice and stable. It's good in all weathers and all terrains. And if you aquaplane, you've got more stability. So you're taking a lot of safety factors into account as well. If the car like this is more aimed at track use, then you can start to introduce some tow out into the setup to make the car behave differently. So tow out on a front axle, for example, will make the car more pointy, help with turning and reduce understeer. With it being rear wheel drive, we're gonna keep the rear axle towed in to help with traction and stability at speed. So we can have a mixture of tow in and tow out on a car between the front and the rear axle, totally dependent on its use and what we're aiming to do with the car and if it's road or track use. So we've measured around the car now and we know what the tow setting is on each corner and it's time to make some adjustments. So we use the patches with the mid-rise so we don't have to lift the car up and down between adjustments. But if you do need to do that, it's important that when the car comes back down, you resettle the car. So you, you move the suspension through some travel and it's also best to try and roll the car backwards and forwards just to unsettle the tire and make sure there's no tension in the suspension system. You can leave the kit on between adjustments because it's hooked onto the car. So it can go up and down whilst remaining on the car. So you don't have to worry about that. But you, want, you need to make sure that you're resettling that suspension between adjustments. So we've finished the car now, it's all locked off. And we're just lifting it up in the air to show you some of the adjustment points that come on cars. So this is quite aftermarket under here, but it resembles the bits you'd be able to adjust as standard as well. So on all cars, you have a steering rack on the front and they'll have tie rods on the end and they're threaded. So you can always adjust your toe by turning the tie rod in and out of the threaded end. That's how you adjust your front toe. So depending on front and rear rack, you make the tie rods longer or shorter to change the angle of the steering. So at the rear of the car, it does have an adjustable rear toe arm, which is aftermarket, but it has still got its OEM adjuster in the subframe. So if this arm was standard, we could still adjust the toe. The toe arm is the one at the rear that comes into the rear edge of the hub, and it has an eccentric bolt in the subframe. So this can be loosened, and then it can be turned in the subframe to give more toe in and more toe out, depending where you want to set the, the setting to. So that's where the adjustment is on the vast majority of cars. It always tends to have a rear toe adjuster. Some cars have rear camera as well, some cars don't, but the vast majority of cars have a rear toe adjuster and front toe on a steering rack. So that's the basics on how to align a car using a string and line kit. For more further information, head over to our website, suspensionsecrets.co.uk, where we have many more articles in much more detail that you can delve into and learn a lot more about suspension. And we're gonna have a lot more videos coming in the future. So make sure to just subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch those videos coming out.